Hi, this is Alex Harker with Morpheus Data. Today we're gonna to talk about three key features of Morpheus governance, which are tenancy, role-based access control, and the policy engine. These are very important concepts to understand as an administrator to control the user experience and access to various resources, as well as making sure that costs are controlled and things of that nature. So the first of those three pillars we'll discuss are tenants. Tenants in the Morpheus context are isolated environments. These could be for uh, your customers, they could be for user groups within various departments of a large organization. There's a number of different contexts that tenants make sense in, but when you install the appliance for the first time, you're automatically seated with a special type of tenant known as the master tenant. This is the only tenant that's able to uh, create policies, create user role groups, uh, create integrations that are shared with the subtenants. The subtenants themselves are completely isolated from each other. So if we were to click the create tenant button, uh, at the very least what I would need to do is give my new tenant a name and then choose a base role. Now we haven't discussed roles just yet, but a tenant role, once that is selected, is essentially a right ceiling set for all users within the subtenant. No matter what user roles the subtenant users are given, they will always have to fall underneath the ceiling as defined by the tenant role or the base role that we select here. So we can take a look at a pre-existing tenant and you can see that there is one user inside of my tenant. I can view the, uh, view the role group that that particular user in and see some other things. I can also opt to impersonate the user, so if I'm setting up a role rights set, I can make sure by impersonating the user that they are only seeing what I want them to see as an administrator from within the master tenant. We'll circle back to tenants uh, in just a moment once we understand a little bit more about roles and policies, but let's jump over to roles. Now I've already alluded to one of the two main types of roles, which is the tenant role. If we were to go to create a role, we can see the two types listed here, user role and tenant role. So when we were in the modal to create a brand new tenant, the base role um, we would be choosing from any one of the tenant roles that have already been created. Some of them will come with the appliance by default, but you will also want to create your own role sets for both users and tenants. Since I'm in the master tenant right now, uh, if I'm creating a user role, I have the ability to do two unique things that subtenant administrators can't do. One is to create a multi-tenant role, which will seed that role set into all existing and all future subtenants. Um, that could be for maybe just some baseline roles to give the subtenant administrators ideas for ways that they can work with the roles, or I can even go so far as to completely lock my subtenant administrators from being able to create or edit any of the user roles that are already there as well. It's up to you as the master tenant administrator. Uh, marking or unmarking this particular box is what uh, would allow a subtenant administrator to branch off of any multi-tenant roles that are seeded into their subtenant if I wanted to allow that or not allow that. So those are uh, just a couple of additional options that we have when creating a user role because as an administrator in the master tenant, I have the ability to um, seed those roles into my subtenants or I can keep them as roles that I just want to use for my own users within the master tenant. On saving, uh, when we were in that modal there, you saw that essentially we're just giving it a name and deciding if it's a user role or a tenant role. On saving the role, we would be taken to a screen just like the one I'm showing you here for this role that's already pre-existing. We can see uh, tabs that allow us to control UI feature access for our users. We can control cloud or group access depending on if we're looking at a user or a tenant role. We can limit them to seeing just certain instance types, and that can be Morpheus pre-built instance types or our custom instance types, and then the same thing with blueprints as well. So again, the tenant role is what sets the right ceiling within the subtenant, and the user roles are assigned to specific users. Um, just if they were a subtenant user, those rights uh, cannot exceed the rights of the base role. Moving on over to policies, 
Um, you'll see that there's a number of policies already created here within my master tenant. If I were to click add policy, uh, within the type dropdown is where I can see all of the different uh, policy types. So you have very fine grain control here. It's designed to allow for enterprise level policy schemes and it's very detailed. Depending on what I choose, I will see new, new fields appearing here. Um, that have to do with the specific type that I set. And since I'm an administrator in the master tenant, I can give various scopings to these policies. Uh, global, just a cloud group, one specific cloud, one specific user, or even a role. If I were to do a role, I can also choose whether that applies individually to each user in the role or the role group as a whole. And again, an additional ability being an administrator in the master tenant, I can choose to assign this policy to one or even multiple of my subtenants. So as you can see, this is a type ahead field. If I begin typing in there, I can start to choose tenants that I want to assign that to. So circling back to my tenant, now that I have, uh, now that we have a greater understanding of how the roles are created, what they're designed to do, as well as the policy engine and how we can begin to create, uh, if needed, an enterprise level uh, policy scheme. If I circle back to the tenants, I can take a look at the users within my tenant. As I mentioned before, I can choose to impersonate a user, and that's how I can make sure that you know, maybe the instance types I've limited to in the provisioning wizard uh, or the UI elements that I've limited to, I can make sure that that worked correctly. If this person is an administrator within the subtenant, they will probably have access to the administration uh, menu. And if I were to go into, say, roles here, you can see the difference. I don't have the ability to create multi tenant roles because I'm now within a subtenant. I don't have the ability, um, say, if I were in policies, to scope uh, the policies to any of the additional tenants because the subtenants are all completely isolated from each other. So the subtenants can make policies for themselves, but they're also subject to the policies. Um, and role rights that are determined by administrators within the master tenant. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is just a brief overview of tenants, role-based access control, and policy engine as it exists in Morpheus. They give you very fine-grained control over how you create your schemes and should fit into just about any enterprise-level configuration that you may already have set up. Thank you so much.